Um, I just wanted to uh, read uh, one scripture, right? Where the Lord says to the disciples, uh, John chapter twenty um, says, um, you know, when He's appearing to them after the post the resurrection, and He appears to them, and then He says this, John twenty and verse twenty one. He says, "Peace to you, as the Father has sent me." I also send you, right? Peace to you. First of all, shalom, peace, all that. I mean, uh, this is, of course, a Greek word, irony, but he's saying peace to you. And as the Father has sent me, I send you. Okay? So the question is, you know, how did the Father send him? Obviously, with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And um, that is what we see in Luke chapter 4, right? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Luke 4, 18, he has anointed me to preach the gospel uh, to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. So saying that, as the Father has sent me, right? That is what we see. As the Father has sent me, um, he has, I, I send you. He's commissioning us or he's commissioning his disciples in the same manner, with the same authority, with the same anointing, saying, as the Father has sent me, I have sent you. So um, so that is something for us to you know, keep in mind as we think about right, reaching uh, you know, or, or sharing the message of truth in our sphere of influence, sharing Christ with others, that the Lord has sent us as the Father has sent Jesus in the same manner. So nothing different, right? So um, that should really embolden us. That should also, you know, um, give us an idea of the authority and the identity that we possess and with which we can actually minister or share, right? So let's uh, let's pray. Okay, Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, Lord that you send us in the same manner the Father sent you, Lord. Father God, what an awesome privilege, Lord, to be sent with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, to be sent, O oh God, with the manifestations, expressions of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you are our wisdom, Lord, you are our righteousness, Lord, and Father God, to walk in that Christ confidence. Master, we pray, uh, I pray for each one of us, Lord, I pray that, uh, yeah, that we will, every time we, um, Lord, every day, O oh Father God, that we'll be aware of this, Father God, that you are sending us the way you were sent, O oh God. Uh, with all power, with all authority, Master. And Lord, may we never forget that. May we never forget who we are, the ones who are sent, who are called out, who are chosen, who are sent out in the name of Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the power and the anointing of the Lord. We thank you, Lord. May our walk with you, may our walk, Lord, we express that power. May our walk manifest, Lord, your glory. We thank you in Jesus' master's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, from today, um, today, two sessions and the uh, next session also, we will see um, tomorrow also, we'll see how many we can cover, right? So student presentations. So we have a, a list of um, topics, sermon topics, sermon title. Okay, I think we have about um, 13 minus two. So that's about 11 who have actually entered, right? So others have not. So if you haven't, I uh, just want to request you to fill in that, um, the sermon topic and title. And so we can uh, you know, evaluate. Okay. Um, right. So. Uh, um, so I yes. To, I have a question before starting. Sorry, I could. I was not able to access the, that link for a couple of times I tried. Um, really? So that's why I couldn't enter there, but I have my title ready uh, whenever I present it. Uh, okay, let me just uh, post it on the stream again. You can maybe, um, you, you couldn't access it. You didn't have, um, it's denying access. Is it, is it that? Um, I've, I actually, I've shared, I've given editor rights to everyone. So it ideally should not yeah, deny access. Anyway, I've shared it on the stream. You can take a look at it and then enter the details, right? Okay. Right, okay. So 
here i have <laughs> the chips here so let's start off so i shall ask mr prince to take the first one <laughs> and uh, yeah friends only one one chip jackin huh? okay okay um jackin this is your your shit so your name has come up um so what we'll do is um now like we said it's uh, 10 minutes right so uh, are you ready jackin you can you're ready to present uh yes pastor so i'll yeah. can you hear me yeah sure we can we can hear you yes. so uh, just one second um let me start the timer and then uh, we can just give me a minute sorry yeah okay so 10 minutes yeah um yeah um you can i I'll, I'll just tell you and you can stop yeah so it means that you couldn't complete it which means you overshot so okay so so probably um what i'll do is probably by ninth minute i'll give a I'll put a text, uh, you know, uh, and then so I don't want to disturb you. Things just keep your you know eye on the chat, uh, so you have one minute to complete. Okay, so Jackin, you're ready. Okay, yeah, go ahead, please. Thank you, Pastor. So uh, the topic that I chose was uh, unshakable peace, living in a place of quiet and rest. So let's read from Mark chapter four. 33 onwards on the same day when evening had come he said to them let us cross over to the other side now they left the multitude took him along in the boat as it was and other little boats were also with him and a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling but he was in the stern asleep on a pillow and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So here we clearly see of an instant, uh, I'm sorry, instance in the life of Jesus and his disciples. So Jesus was very much with them in the boat. But it's just that they could not recognize who Jesus was at that time when the storm came. And also they failed to understand what God can do for them. So many times, even in our own lives, we might face storms and that should never alarm us. The first thing is we ask God, Lord, I'm obeying you. I've been walking with you. And why is this situation, Lord? So, but when that storm arises, it should never alarm us. We have his richness of promises that he has given us in his word. But what happens is just like the disciples, when we uh, question God, he just strengthens us and he gives us the grace to depend on him. So that grace is very much available to us. So even if we question, so he gives us the grace and the presence of the Holy Spirit is with us. So as we renew ourselves, so this is an everyday thing that we that we do uh, and he helps us to do it because as we renew our mind in the, in the word of God and his presence continually guides us, so when we grow in his presence, so everything else, including the storm, becomes void and, it's, and everything else becomes unnecessary in our lives. All that we hear is his clear, still voice. So his voice is never confusing. It's so still, assuring us, strengthening us and comforting us. It comforts our inmost being. So here we see when the whirlwind arose, the waves beat into the sea. So similarly, the voices of the enemy and the human voices, maybe they can even say it for our own good. But, you know, it just gets inside us. It goes and it runs into our minds and thoughts. It forms a pattern in our lives and we get restlessness and we get anxiety, tension and depression. And then we question ourselves. But the Lord has given us his word to trust in him. He says, 
in Psalms, be still and know that I am God. So when we turn ourselves from the worldly voices or the voice of the enemy that's attacking us and align ourselves with the scriptures, we immediately get his peace. So that is something that we have to be mindful of as we, as we walk in him, as we grow in him, everyday things, people might change, situations might come, circumstances might come. But the Lord says, you in this world, you will have trouble, but I have given you my peace. So let us always focus on God and what he has told. When we focus on his promises, his word, this can never affect us. And even in Job, we, uh, we see of a situation because when fear comes and controls us, so that what we fear might happen. So we should be very careful that we never let this fear, worry or doubt overtake us because the devil comes to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus has come to give us abundant life and life in full. So when the devil takes away our joy and peace, so then we can never walk from a place of of faith and peace even our decisions will be out of fear and we react in fear and we say so the uh what we say might not be aligned with what god wants us to hear also we see the disciples they immediately they're reacting out in fear and confusion they're asking teacher are you not uh, do you not care that we are perishing but we know jesus he has said i will never leave you nor forsake you so his word is like and he has come to give us life. So when we are in fear, we sometimes uh, question the very fact of who Jesus is. We might also ask questions like, Lord, do you not care for me? Like, uh, do you not know that I'm going through this situation? Lord, you very much know, I, you know that I love you, but what is happening now, Lord? Like, I have trusted you. So very much we question uh, the very fact that who Jesus is. But Jesus himself is our peace. He's given us everything. And when we are facing the situation, we also know that he has kept us away. But these alarming thoughts, when it comes, immediately ask the Lord for strength. Lord, help me, Lord. Because we can do this only by his grace. And the word says, greater is he who is within me than who is in the world. And when he fills us with his peace, no one can shake that peace from us. Because it is deep within. And all our reactions, all of our attitudes and all of our motives will come from that place of peace. So when we continually keep on doing this, trusting in him day after day, week after week. So this becomes our lifestyle. And we see that the disciples, one thing that I would like to encourage is the same disciples uh, would have, who had asked, you know, like, uh, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? But the same disciple John wrote uh, in John, John's Gospel 14, 26 to 27, we read, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So as we go through life situations, and as we go through these troubling situations, it is possible for us to go from that place where we actually question God during our storms to a place of quiet and rest. It is a journey. It is a journey with our Lord. And through it all, through it all, we should never forget that He is with us and He gives us the strength to overcome. And He alone is our comforter. And as we focus, as we keep focusing on him, his word, his love, his love is more than enough for us. Even if everything else fails, Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And his word never changes. We can just hold on to his word and we have the Holy Spirit within us. So as I was taking this topic, Lord, why are you asking me to share about this topic, which I struggle so much? But the Lord said, I'm teaching you. And you just share what I'm teaching you. So as I was preparing this, it is so much possible for us to live in this peace. But why we are not able, where is our struggle? It's because we do not depend on him. We have to depend. We depend on so many other things 
we have so many other choices and then we say lord lord what has happened but i just want to encourage us this with this that when we seek god and trust in his word and yield to his voice in obedience no matter how difficult it is we might be facing a rough patch in life and nobody can understand what's happening in our lives but we keep drawing from him and that keeps us constant unshakable and nobody can shake us from that point because it is inside of us people can see our exterior but what is within us nobody can see so he moves and we just hold his hand we just hold his hand depend on him walk in this quietness and rest and the lord says in quietness and confidence is your strength so just like jesus we can be resting keep on resting on his rich promises and he slept when the storm came so we have our rich promises in god so just like jesus we'll be sleeping on our rich promises because jesus has said it and he has given us the anointing he has given us the grace and he has given us the power to overcome so isaiah 26 7 says you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts him amen thank you shaken yeah thank you um just a few um thoughts here okay i i just uh, made um, some notes as you were sharing so um like what would um, really help further is the the flow like a logical flow of things uh if you were to share okay like three things or four things and call it out right because you shared a lot of things about um, continuing to have a lifestyle of unshakable peace you know uh, and which is opposite of fear and so on so um which is you know all good things very inspiring um very helpful but if it was presented in a in a logical way so you know you say oh, these are three things it would help the listener right so and also the application of it i think you were actually stating the application okay uh, Uh, you can be a little more specific in the application and call out everyday situations like you know what would it be for a mother who's getting the child ready for you know uh, whatever you know exams or what would be for a working professional if he has to pay if he has to you know the face a presentation or something like that or a student uh, exams and so on so that would really give it even more uh, uh, imp- impact when you're presenting so i just wanted to share that right thank you thank you so much okay so who's next anan please you're, you're, no no you know your your turn to take the <laughs> samuel okay um samuel madhu is it are those different okay let one second let me just check uh, samuel madhu right okay samuel um, are you ready to present samuel madhu um samuel madhu yeah uh, i see that you have logged in uh, we can't hear you you can unmute and or oh, you can put on the chat um samuel's topic is not there okay samuel i will we okay 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 fine okay then we'll uh, anand one more please <laughs> tick 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 <laughs> okay <laughs> okay okay so you have francis to present so <laughs> okay so yeah so you're presenting from there you logged in have you logged in you're not logged in okay you can sit uh, where anand is sitting and then present <laughs> sure all, all right you can you can pass the mic sorry just getting 
a few things set here. So, so okay, so we have Francis presenting next. Um, Francis, I'll tell you when to start. So just check the sound and everything, please. Check. Oh, you can use the mic, which is check. here. On my check. Yeah. No, I need high school. Say something. No, no. Uh, check, check. No, this is. No, 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 no. Check. Yeah. No, okay. I just enable the video. Okay. Yeah. He's reduced it. Yeah. You ready? Okay. 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 Good morning, everyone. Uh... You're on mute. You're on mute, I mean, friends. Uh, um, oh, I need to unmute. I'm sorry, let's start from the beginning again. Okay, so I just need to switch off the mic when he starts. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so, is it, hopeful everybody is doing well. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for this wonderful opportunity given to us, especially in person students. It's a great experience uh, preparing the message uh, and uh, welcoming uh, uh, all in person students, uh, online students, and who is doing e learning and who is going to listen to this voice. Uh. So, my topic is uh, Shepherd. Everybody know that one scripture, Psalm 23. Everybody by hearted that one. So nothing need to describe about that. But I want to share something. Uh, what is shepherd? Se shepherd means like in in the God's name, Jehovah Rohi. But there is something behind that. Shepherd. So in we are looking uh, at the worldly life there are normal shepherds are there there are two type of shepherds one is good shepherd and the one is they will come for rented so what the good shepherd will do is they will take care about their sheep they will take care about their lambs as it is on they'll be more care about their sheep but what the person do coming for the wages as a rental, as a labor, they will take the sheep to somewhere and he will sleep nicely. He not need to take care because he's coming for wages. He not need to do anything. Whatever is coming, I'm getting salary. That is the mind of that person. But we are going to discuss about the good shepherd who paid for us. So a shepherd in a sense we can describe like us two. One is our Lord Jesus Christ. Another one is the who pastor God has sent for us, who is teaching us. First, I want to share regarding little of pastor. And I will come back to Jesus Christ. So one day I'm talking with one pastor. He said about pastoral ministry is not easy. It's like us how shepherd is taking care about sheep. Every sheep are not same. If uh, I, I have experience to growing the sheep, so what will happen is like if we are doing anything, the shop sheep won't do anything. If one, we want to do one thing with the sheep, we need to do the particular effort. They won't drink water nicely. We should push, push, push. Sometimes the gods will hit us, kick us. We should overcome that. The same like as pastors who are is going to do the pastoral ministries is not an easy job. We should take care about God, but 
don't expect the god will do same thing to us so coming back to jesus christ what jesus christ did for us he died for us in john 10 11 the jesus is explaining about that i am the good shepherd the good shepherd will give life for the sheep even come to the psalm 23 first verse the lord is my shepherd i shall not want in niv version is saying i will not lack for anything because lord is my shepherd just to think about who is the author is the david what is the job of david before he is getting the crown he's a shepherd he's taking care about his father's sheep so he know very well what is the duty of shepherd He's considering he is a sheep and Lord is the shepherd. So he only shared to King Saul what happened in his shepherd in time, in the forest, what happened. The lion and on time bear came to his sheep. As a shepherd, what he did? He ran. Just think on 16 years old boy, he's a shepherd. He's running for his sheep. He's a shepherd. Is the identity and responsibility of a shepherd to take the sheep. On time, we are also a lost sheep. We are also inside of the mouth of the enemy. Jesus Christ, he is a shepherd. He paid for us the last drop of the blood for us. He proved that he is a good shepherd. So what we need to do, we have some responsibilities. First one is be fruitful and bore more sheep. It means share the gospel all over the world and take more sheep to the kingdom of God. Just to think about next to verse of the Psalm 23, the second verse, he make me to lie down in pastures. There's a story behind of my life. I'm really thinking what is green pastures. A lot of visions people uh, saw me regarding green pastures. I'm thinking about that. So finally, I got is a blessing, is a new beginning. We not need to lack for the blessings. Because the shepherd is always there to give what we need, what we want. Yesterday, I'm hearing about on message, uh, the evangelist Nick. He's saying something regarding prayer and asking from the shepherd. He don't have arms and legs. He prayed for that. He didn't got. But his answer, I really wondered about me. We are asking anything to our shepherd, Jesus Christ. I need this. I need this. He knows everything. What sheep need to eat. What sheep need to wear. Everything the shepherd knows. If we are asking anything, God is not replaying. What is that? We are keeping God down. God has something more we need to do. You see, the green pastures is more than our thinking. It's more than our imagination. What the shepherd wants to do to us. What the shepherd wants to give to us. So my dear brothers and sisters, classmates, I want to encourage you with these words. Be under the shepherd. Abide in him. Listen to him. Walk through him. See, listen from him and obey him. What he is showing, which way he is going. Follow him. In the, all the situation of the life, God bless you. Okay, um, we have some more time, Francis. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, okay, so that was that was good. Um, again, you know, um, uh, again, when it comes to the flow of things, uh, it would help, you know, if you uh, like share it. Like um, I think it was good that you distinguish between the the ministry of the shepherd and the you know the as Jesus being our shepherd, being a role model, and that was uh, you know that clarity. And then also um, 
him being our example of you know being the shepherd so you know, how do i practically transfer it into my life uh, into my life if you can you can always go into more details like you know uh, and that would also help uh, help understand right um, maybe it is guiding someone maybe it is encouraging someone maybe it is uh, like sharing the truth with someone or things like that you know uh, so that would help right okay thank you so um, maybe you can pick the next chit <laughs> okay okay rin is not here right she's logged in okay she's not here okay wait let's you pick some i put it back then pick someone else Nina John okay okay so um Nina John oh Nina okay uh, Nina John is online uh, hi Nina um are you ready to present uh can i have 10 minutes if somebody else can go in and then i'm i'm so sorry can i have 10 minutes more well, i mean if someone else can go in now i'll just take a little is that okay okay uh 10 minutes more is it okay you want to present after this okay yes. um okay i see rinchen back so rin if you are ready you can present are you ready yeah huh? i don't see possible to do it in the next class <laughs> next class okay are you out of the country or something okay, okay. <laughs> okay okay um okay then i'll pick you no know, uh, i'll pick the next chit let's see if um okay shiv kumar i think i see shiv kumar uh is he is he online okay okay all right okay so shiv kumar can you share right. shiv kumar s yes. are you ready to share um oh but uh, today was the presentation so and you need to you need to put the topic i'm surprised that the topic is not ready yet so um you know kindly put it before end of day today right so there can be no delays about the topic um okay right so who else is um okay shiv kumar next class okay okay i have uh, ravali ravali pothala uh so ravali my pastor so you so yes. you're, you're ready okay so your topic is uh the topic is blank but the title is uncertain god <laughs> yeah oh, okay <laughs> so uncertain god fine um uh, can you just give me a few seconds i'll just uh, yeah just let me know when you're ready sure we'll start off okay yes. uh so i think uh, anyway with this we'll go into the break after ravi's presentation okay past uh do i need to uh, use a ppt or something if i have can i yeah 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 you can go ahead you can share yeah okay just uh, can i turn on my video um what sorry uh yeah yeah can you hear sorry for the background and the crossing in my screen just You ready? Uh one I'm presenting my screen faster. Okay. Okay, uh hope my screen is visible right now. Yeah, it's coming up. Yes. Okay, I think uh, you can start the timer. 
yeah started okay thank you uh, good morning everyone thank you so much for this opportunity today um i would like to share uh, something that god has put on my heart uh, for a while now and the sermon topic for today is uncertain god where is um uh, uh, where I wanted to focus on uh, in terms of, uh, you know, so much uncertainty, how uh, God is being so certain about us and our future. So for this session, I'll just uh, uh, start with the question, uh, what is the uncertainty you are facing? If you are around uh, the mic, you can just uh, grab the mic and uh, say if you are facing some kind of uncertainty. Uh, you can just give one or two answers. So I have only 10 minutes, so you have to be quick. So you can just say one or two answers. If you are facing... I think we're not very certain. <laughs> 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 Go ahead, lovely. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, so in these times okay let me let me put it across like this in these times we all do face some kind of uncertainty about our future about our present uh, or anything that we are uh, you know thought about or dreamt about and in these uncertain times as believers and followers of jesus christ how we move forward in life what kind of attitude what kind of perspectives that we need to have uh, in, in order to live a victorious life that Jesus has already given us. To demonstrate or to explain that, I would like to take a, a small story from the Bible, and I'm only taking a, a one, one particular uh, verse, uh, chapter, which is the Luke chapter 8. And this story is about, uh, we all know, uh, it starts from verse number 22. I will read it for you guys. So now it happened on a certain day, that he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake and they launched out. So I would like you to remember the highlighted words. That is the reason I'm presenting my uh, you know, screen today. So let us cross over to the other side on a very amazing day, like a cool day. Uh, imagine Jesus is on the boat with the disciples and they are uh, they are just going to the other side and disciples are so excited. Maybe, yeah, we are joining with Jesus and we are going to the other side. And 23rd verse, the second next verse says, but as they sailed, he fell asleep and a windstorm came down on the lake and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. Jeopardy is uh, so much of chaos, so much of fear, so much of confusion, it could be termed as that as well. When the winds and the storms hit the boat, imagine uh, you can see here in the picture that Jesus is amazingly sleeping, but the disciples around him were so uh, scared of further lives and what happening around them. And going to the next verse, and they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. Going forward, but he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. Here, when you go continue the story, the first part is they all are going. To the other side jesus said let's go to the other side and in the middle of the way in the middle of the ocean right in the middle of the ocean they were facing some kind of a situation there where they were hit by the winds and the waves and the water is getting into the boat and the disciples who walked with jesus all this while who saw him feeding uh you know uh, so many five thousand people who saw him healings and miracles everything they have been seeing with jesus and when they faced this kind of a situation, they couldn't really see what Jesus is seeing. And it, it sounds funny, but Jesus is sleeping in the midst of the storms. Even the water is splashing on his face. Maybe even the water is coming in the boat, but he's still sleeping. So your situation doesn't define the rest and the peace that you could be in. Jesus defines it. 
So wherever he is there, even in the midst of the storm, even in the midst of whatever situation, even in the midst of the fire, like we saw in the uh, book of Daniel, he when he is there, when he is there, so there is peace and there is rest. So when Jesus immediately woke up and she was like, oh God, people are, you know, uh, you know, people are uh, very, very chaotic and they are being afraid. He rebuked the wind. He didn't, he didn't say, he didn't even think a minute. He rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was calm in the atmosphere. So from the place of calm, Jesus rebuked the wind and that brought calm in the physical realm, in the atmosphere that the disciples are facing. But the question comes to us, you know, but he said to them, where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled. And they were like, wow, this is Jesus. But this is the same Jesus that they're being, you know, uh, seeing uh, for, a, for a very long time now. Let's go move forward uh, into the story. Um, but eventually, did they reach the other end? Yes. They did reach their other end. So I would like to present four things that we could take away from this story. One, in these times of uh, uncertain times that we are living in, uh, so we are called to live under the shadow of the certain God. He has no doubts about us or our future. He has no doubts. We are the, per we are the people on the receiving end. We have doubts and it is natural to have it. So how do we overcome it is something that we need to learn as disciples and believers of God. So the first point is he is in the boat. So recognizing that God is in the boat. Sometimes we forget that once we see something hit us, we always, uh, we always feel so overwhelmed that we forget that we have Jesus Christ with us in our life. In fact, the Holy Spirit is residing inside us. The Prince of Peace is residing inside us. Just remind ourselves that he is in the boat. And the second one, awakening. Realizing that who Jesus is, what he is able to, how much mighty and power that he has. And this is the perfect story that G through this story and situation, Jesus is not only teaching his disciples, but to all of us, you know, that during this kind of situations that we face, that we realize we need to realize the power of God. The power of God makes us to change the environment, our perspectives, and how we see a problem. See, every impossibility is a possibility for God. So if we have an impossible situation, be glad in one way because that is a situation where God can show his power. We can see the glory of God even through those difficult, impossible situations that we are facing in. And the third one is be offensive. Jesus, what he did, he didn't sing a song with the storm. He didn't really had a conversation with the storm. And we, we often, you know, uh, don't realize uh, uh, that we need to be offensive. We need not to be always defensive and put ourselves in the uh, bucket of a self-pity. Oh, I'm only going through. Why God? Why what happened? Yes, we go through all those emotions. But realizing when you realize the power of Jesus Christ, that kind of awakening comes into our heart and that realization and conviction comes into our life. We take the position and authority that Jesus has given to us. As he said in Isaiah 61, 1, that he anointed us to do so, not anybody. So be offensive, rebuke the storms. How long I should rebuke? Rebuke until it goes. Rebuke until the devil knows that he needs to flee away. Because what, what it was told, resist the devil and it will go. You know, don't speak to the devil, just rebuke it. And the fourth one, the one is the other side. When Jesus promised that we are going to the other side, that's it. In between, all this is happening. There is a process. There is a, uh, there is a learnings. There are we are go growing closer to God, learning how to live with Jesus. But yes, at the end of the day, we are going to the other side. That is a portion. That is the 
our hope and the promise that God has given to us. So I, I feel that uh, I will leave you with this thought that I reiterated that I want to reiterate this part that every impossible. Okay, uh, impossible lovely. Your time is up. Um, yeah, just finish that uh, sentence. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I think I'm I'm done, Pastor. Uh, Thank uh, you. That last thing that you said, you can just finish. Yeah. That. Uh, so wanted to stop here that every impossible situation is a possibility for God. Mm. So yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, just a few things. Um, you know, that last slide that you put up, right? So that's um, that's a takeaway, right? Um, um, so I, I was just wondering if you could um, like uh, reword that, you know, those four things. Uh, first is, of course, Jesus is in the boat, which means that he is in, with us in our situations. Uh, that's great that we could understand. But the second one was awakening. So I was just wondering if you could reword it you know, uh, some other way uh, that would be, um, you know, that be easy to understand. The third thing also, be offensive. You know, uh, I think what you meant was be on the offensive in the sense, uh, move forward, don't be defensive. But when you say be offensive, that means uh, to offend someone, you know, with your word or action. So you can, you know, be on the offensive would be um, thing uh, like don't be passive or you know be active is what you meant right so that's it then uh, of course the other side the surety of the other side the certainty of the other side going on to the other side because the certainty of the uh, destination which um, the Lord has stated so that was uh, yeah just thought I'll share that thank you right. thank you so much Pastor All right most welcome okay so we'll take a break um, we'll come back at 10.05 Okay, now it's 9.55, 10.05, thank you.